Uh, thank you for attending my talk, and I hope you're having a wonderful first day here at Jay on the Beach. It's the first time for me as well. Uh, this is uh, how runtime intelligence helps reduce vulnerabilities in production. And I've been told that many of you are DevOps, uh, SREs, uh, pure devs, right? So I guess uh, many of you uh, manage the vulnerability uh, nightmare of fixing the vulnerabilities, right? Um, I would like to ask you to raise your hand if you or your team are in charge of fixing vulnerabilities. Any of you? Some of you? <laughs> okay, um, I'm Alba Ferri, as Anna said, I work at CISDIG, um, I'm a senior product marketing manager, and uh, for those of you who do not know about CISDIG, we uh, are a SaaS platform that help DevOps and cloud teams to secure applications from source to run. Um, we have five former um, offices around the globe, and one of those offices happens to be in Spain. So if you want to know more about what we do, how we do it, uh, job opportunities, uh, we have a stand that you can come <laughs> and talk to us, and we'll tell you about that. Um, I also, I'm also part of Women in DevOps community, and before pandemic, I used to be uh, a native person about uh, attending conferences, workshops, meetups, but uh, we had to stop for a while during pandemic, and I'm very glad that we can return to this in in-person events. By the way, we uh, are going to be, Cystic is going to be in KubeCon, so if any of you, of you are going to be there, come say hi. Um, you can follow me on Twitter by uh, Brahman2k, and as Arno uh, was saying, I'm, uh, I have a couple of chickens, uh, Glaura and Flavia, and the white one uh, lays beautiful blue eggs. So uh, my, my son David wanted to show you that it's uh, just a normal egg, and, and you can eat it, uh, wonderful tortillas. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's talk about what I'm going to uh, be explaining here. As you've read in the title, we're going to be talking mainly about vulnerability risks and how uh, applying runtime intelligence, uh, we can reduce those uh, that vulnerability risk. We'll talk about the what, the how, the why, and then I sum up uh, to uh, talk about the concept, what we learned here. And I don't know if I will have time for some Q&A. Uh, if you have questions, you can always come to our stand and we can talk there. Okay, so vulnerability risk. Um, um, Mm, what happens today, the reality is that we have many applications in production that have a lot of vulnerabilities. The reasons behind this could be uh, we, need, we are in a hurry to shift uh, new features. The company has uh, put a date to uh, offer a new service. Maybe we're using a new language and we don't know that well, so we incur on new vulnerabilities. I mean, you name it, right? And so having such a big volume of vulnerabilities, what happens is that we don't have uh, a formal way to uh, give action. We don't have an uh, easy way to start uh, prioritizing them, right? Uh, what we do is uh, just uh, a start by, by the most critical one, but sometimes that is not enough. Uh, it's not uncommon that SREs are the ones that find uh, critical or um, potential vulnerabilities in production. And sometimes this comes because the security, it was not in the head of the developers when they were building the application. In some companies, security teams or compliance teams 
are the ones stopping us from shifting applications in production. Uh, DevOps are overloaded with uh, the, the quantity of vulnerabilities that they have to fix, and um, business expectations are not met. So at the end, we have a lot of friction within the company and between the teams. So it's, it's a big problem here. Uh, what could be done to optimize all this process? Is it something that we can do to you know, ease the, the, the way of how we solve these vulnerabilities? And uh, the um, answer to that, we think, is using runtime intelligence. Uh, but first things first, as Imagine Dragons say. What is runtime intelligence? Um, an easy definition would be uh, that runtime intelligence is a technique that gives intelligence knowledge about um, the software, the workload, usage, and uh, how, how it's uh, um, you know, uh, managed in, in the runtime space, right? Uh, a more formal definition would be that runtime is intelligence are the techniques and managed services that uh, collect, analyze, and present software uh, usage patterns and practices, right? With all that information, we can um, solve many use cases. Use cases such as monitoring, predicting, uh, software engineering, and vulnerability risk as well. So uh, in order to give an answer to provide vulnerability risk, we need to uh, collect that information. The way, uh, or, or the type of information that we need to collect is about um, open source, uh, open, uh, sorry, uh, system operation stats, uh, binary usage, um, package features, versions, builds, right? With all that information, we can give insights to developers and they can um, build better applications. Okay, so to collect data, we have the most common ways is uh, through code injection or instrumentation, right? Uh, let me use this simple schema here to show that when using containerized application, we add a an additional layer of abstraction, and so we lose visibility. If uh, you use instrumentation, like with an eBPF program, for example, that means that um, the program is running at kernel level, you can see all the syscalls that traverse the kernel. So things like uh, what software, what packages are being used, uh, it's like the starting point of this runtime intelligence, right? Um, okay, so uh, as, as I said, um, right now we have so many vulnerabilities that we need to uh, fix that we are kind of overload. And, and what is uh, more important is that we don't have an easy way to prioritize uh, which of those vulnerabilities we need to uh, fix first. So what if I told you that um, if you use runtime intelligence, you can dramatically reduce the number of vulnerabilities that you need to fix. And I think this is such a, a good picture of what I mean because Okay, we have all those containerized uh, applications, and how many of those uh, are of the of the um, packages that we have inside the container that have a vulnerability? How many of those are actually being loaded in runtime? Much uh, much less than uh, we would think. Right, And then for those that are loaded in runtime, how many of those have a fix? Because how do you fix a vulnerability? Normally you update the package version, right? So if you don't have a fix for that package, I mean, it's no point that you have it in your list, 
you know? So I'm not saying you should forget about those, but just put them away for whenever there is a fix available, right? And then the third thing would be for the ones that you have loaded in memory, for the ones that have an actual fit, how, um, how many of those have a public exploit, okay? Because uh, in many occasions, CVEs are published just more like a theoretical thread, but really there's not uh, an exploit behind that. So again, let's use that information to prioritize which vulnerabilities you need to fix first. Um, using all of that information, we can reduce a lot the quantity of uh, vulnerabilities that we need to fix. So no uh, overload for DevOps team, for dev teams anymore. We, if you uh, can fix vulnerabilities faster because you have less vulnerabilities to fix, you have more time to uh, manage uh, how, how you do uh, your day-to-day, -day, right? And you ease your mind in the sense that uh, don't uh, think that that task is never-ending, right? Because sometimes now it's such a big amount of vulnerabilities that you need to fix that you think you're never going to to finish the work, right? And then if you have, uh, again, more time, you fix it faster, um, you can start adding uh, or, yeah, adding uh, shift left practices to software development. So you can add the different security controls through the application lifecycle, easing the life of everyone in the company. So um, if all of these things happen, Developers are happier because their work is not being pushed down. Uh, SREs do not find as many vulnerabilities. Um, security teams do not push down your uh, new services. In general, the company can uh, grow at their own pace and everyone is happier. So uh, as you see, this talk has a happy ending. I hope you <laughs> uh, enjoy the talk. And now if you have any questions, uh, go ahead or we can see it in the stand. <laughs>